these are happy times everybody in the stock market is a happy person today sensex has climbed 58000 on the upside this is a period of euphoria and also a period of hallucination it's a raging bull market is everything fine in a bull market the answer to that is no the bull market hides many of the ugly truths in this episode i am going to talk to you about what is that you should be aware of what is that you should be cautious of in a bull market this is nri money clinic for you and i am dr chandrakant but investment consultant and a financial planner nri money clinic no hype just the right advice just a few weeks before i had done a video on what could happen next when the sensex has hit 53000 and i had mentioned about the various case scenarios today within a short span of time sensex has climbed 58000 and showing no signs of momentum dying down we are in the middle of a bull market is everything fine in a bull market everybody is a happy person here is everything fine i personally feel you have to be extremely cautious in a bull market if you are not cautious the bull markets have a potential to completely ruin you so before you ride on this bull market it's a good idea that you know what can happen after a bull market before we understand what happens after the bull market we should first see what happens during a bull market the first sign that the bull market is raging is the sign that people will shun the professional financial planners people think advisors are not required to an extent they are very right because they watch the news channels they read through the newspapers everywhere they see only the good times or the better prediction and everybody is talking about where the sensex will be 6 months from now 1 year from now 2 years from now the music of the season is up 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 when everybody is saying everything is going up so there is no need of a financial planner this is what happens if people are not taking enough advice from the financial planner it's a clear indication that the bull market is raging who is taking their place the friends and relatives the people whom they talk to in the parties in the evening the television shows the newspaper articles become their advisors remember when a friend or a relative gives you an advice or when you are moved by these articles or the news clippings these are advisors without responsibility they are not responsible for your outcome but when an advisor gives you an advice it's an advice with responsibility people shun such an advice and take the advice of friends and relatives this is a clear indication that the bull market is raging i remember reading one article which was written by peter lynch probably i'll do a complete video on this article written by peter lynch peter lynch is one of the finest fund manager we have seen during our lifetime so he has a story of telling how the market might behave subsequently just by looking at the behavior of the investor to keep the length of the video small i will not get into the details of that probably i'll prepare a video on that sometime later remember bull markets are like flood times when the flood comes it lifts every boat but when the flood recedes people will know which emperor is swimming without clothes let us look at what creates a bull market what are the ingredients of a bull market there are three things which can propel a bull market number 1 the growth number 2 liquidity or supply of money number 3 is the sentiments or the willingness of the participants to buy and create a bull market so these are the three primary ingredients of a bull market out of these three at any point of time you need at least two of them for a bull market to manifest itself what is the current situation now out of growth liquidity and sentiments growth is very anemic so growth is not something which is driving this bull market this bull market is driven by 
ample liquidity the money which is printed by the central bankers and the willingness of the general public or the retail crowd to participate in this bull market these are the two things the liquidity and the sentiments which are pushing this bull market but this bull market is not supported by proper growth on the ground the growth is anemic which gives an indication at some point of time if the liquidity runs out or the sentiment gets vanished then this bull market can come for an abrupt halt it's no doubt that we are in a bull market but how do we successfully pass through this bull market without getting caught in a wrong place to know this we first should know what is that we should know in a bull market once you know the things which you need to know then it becomes easier for you to participate in the bull market and come out of it without any collateral damage the first thing that you need to know is what you should not buy you need not know what you have to buy you can buy anything in a bull market because this is a flood anything you buy tomorrow or next month or a couple of weeks later it is bound to move up that is the way the bull markets perform but you must know what you should not buy this is extremely important because once the bull market ends if you have picked up something which you should not be picking up then it can potentially ruin you you should also know how a bull market unfolds itself why does the price rise and why do you get a feeling that you are making a lot of money please understand when the prices rise it is not a cash flow which is coming into your account if you have put money in a bank fixed deposit when the interest comes to your account it is real money whereas if you have purchased a stock or a mutual fund and if it rises in value it is capital appreciation that means there is a willing buyer on the other side to pay the price and take it from you now this willingness is something which is seasonal today there is somebody to buy this and they are prepared to pay this price after a few weeks or maybe a couple of months maybe one or two year down the line things could be different there may not be any buyers as a result of that whatever the price rise you are seeing today may not be there one or two years later how does the stock market operate every day the stocks are bought and sold let's take the example of one of the shares now let's say reliance in case of reliance now you have billions of shares probably there but every day let us assume that only 1000 share is bought or sold and if this 1000 share is sold or bought for 100 rupees more than what it was yesterday now because of this 100 rupee extra price today and the sale happened only over 1000 shares the entire lot of reliance shares will be priced 100 rupees higher the trading happened only on a minuscule number of shares in the stock market but the outcome is the entire lot of reliance shares held by the general public and promoters will be priced 100 rupees higher we do not know whether everybody can sell this reliance share at the same price the answer is if everybody tries to sell the reliance share instead of people buying at 100 rupees more it may hit the bottom and it may not have the price what is being quoted in the market so it's a quotation of the day you do not know whether there is another buyer who can pick it up from you at that particular price one another thing that you need to know to successfully pass through a bull market and make money out of this is you should know what happens after the end of a bull market if you do not know this then you will be waiting in the bull market thinking that the price will rise tomorrow and it continues to rise a bull market has an entry point bull market also gives you an exit point the prices will not continuously rise it is not a linear equation you bought it today tomorrow it rises day after tomorrow it rises it rises to a particular level and obviously a point will come where the prices will fall or the markets will get into a correction mode or it will fall down and it will crash so you need to know what happens after the bull market only then you can participate in a very intelligent way in a bull market now let us try to understand what happens after the bull market i'll tell you some of the simple things which you can keep in mind and which will help you guide through this bull market rule number 
the longer the bull market the longer will be the fall if the bull market is raging for 10 long years let's assume when it falls it will not fall for one or two months the fall can also be a prolonged one so the longer the bull market the longer will be the the next bearish phase that will come in rule number two or this is what is visible from the past bull markets and the bust that have happened higher the market climbs the deeper will be the fall the quicker the market climbs the quicker the fall will be the fall so the more and more the market rises you can be absolutely certain the fall can be very very painful it's like an elastic you pull this elastic if you pull it a little bit the recoil will be easier it will not be that painful you pull this a little bit more and the recoil will be much more forceful you pull it a little bit more then the recoil will not stop here but can go on the other side and it, it can create a lot of damage your stock markets are just like an elastic band you can stretch it to a particular level it will withstand but a point will come where they will break or they will give you a bad recoil and the prices will go much lower than what you can ever imagine so many people brush aside the thought that bull markets can totally ruin you they think okay it's a bull market i'm a long-term investor if the market's correct they will come back and regain that previous highs within a short span of time this is not true this is not true there is ample evidence available from history and ample evidence is available from across the globe a bull market most of the time can be very very debilitating once the bull market ends i will share some of the experiences people have seen in the world markets first let us look at the japanese stock markets now the japanese stock markets peaked in the year 1989 the highest point the Japanese stock markets claimed was in the region of 39,000. 1989, after reaching a peak of 39,000, the stock markets corrected and it was a pretty bad correction. And this correction did not last for one year or two years. From 1989, the stock markets continuously started falling down and bottomed out only in the year 2002. From 1989, the bear market literally went for the next 13 years till the stock market touched about 8,000 on the Nikkei stock exchange. The peak was 39,000 or let's say 40,000. From 40,000, Nikkei lost 80% of its valuation. What happened after 2002? In between 2002 and 2010, it participated in the bull markets of the world but it only climbed up to about 15,000 or 16,000 on the sensex before it fell down again to 8,000. So 1989 it was at 39,000 and bottomed at 8,000 in 2002. By 2010 again it was only at about 8,000. What happened subsequently? In my opinion, the Japanese market never recovered beyond that point. But Nikkei today is at about 25,000 level. But what happened in 2012 was Japanese debased their currency. They made quantitative easing. Because of it, the Nikkei index rose mainly because of this money supply or the competitive advantage. But even today, after a massive bull run of present time, still Nikkei is languishing at about 25,000 level. 1989, it was at 39,000. We had a bull market in 2002. We had a bull market in 2007. And we are... We are in the middle of another bull market at the moment. Still, Nikkei did not climb more than 60% of its value from the peaks of the bull market. This is the risk I am talking to you. What can happen after a bull market? When a bull market ends, there is a very good chance that that level will not come for many, many years or it could even languish there for decades together. You may say Japan is an odd case. Japan is a society of very old people. There is not much of a growth prospects. That's why the Japanese markets are languishing at that particular level. If that is the case, I will give you more example. Let's look at another country now, which is the world's fastest growing economy. It is China. China is growing at the fastest pace for last 20 odd years. What is the news from China? 
The Chinese stock markets peaked in the year 2007. The Shanghai Composite Index was at a level of 6100. In 2007, Shanghai Composite Index was at a level of 6100. What happened when the bull markets closed? When the bull markets closed, Shanghai Composite Index dropped all the way from 6100 back to level of about 1700. That's about 70% of its the value it reached in the peak bull market condition. Imagine somebody coming and putting money in a Chinese market when the markets are at 6100 level, he would have wiped out 70% of its wealth when the bull markets receded. Where is the Chinese stock market today? If growth can propel a stock market, then Chinese market should be at a much higher level. After reaching 6100 on the Shanghai Composite Index in the year 2007, even today with a massive bull run across the globe, Shanghai Composite Index is languishing at 3500. That is 60% of its value what it reached in 2007. So if you think growth can propel a stock market up, here is the China market story what it reached in 2007. Even after growing for such a massive rate over the last 14 years, it did not climb back its previous highs. So you should always be very careful when the markets are raging. It can give rise to a very, very unpalatable situation when the bull markets end. Now you may dispose of the Chinese story and you say the growth engine of the world is United States, US. What is the story from United States? For US market, I will take the example of S&P 500 which is a broad based index. Now this S&P 500 index was at a level of 1000 in the year 1998. Yes, it was at a level of 1000 in the year 1998. Within next two years, it climbed to 1500 levels in the year 2000. Within two years, this index fell down to a level of about 750. 1998 it was at 1000 and in 2000 it climbed to a level of 1500 and from there it fell down to a level of about 750 and languished there for a long period of time until 2007 it never touched the previous high of 1552. In 2007 it touched the previous highs that is also with a massive bull run of 2004 to 2007 it just managed to touch the previous highs but a correction set in 2007 and again the S&P 500 slipped to a level of 675 within one year till about 2010 it was languishing at that same level 1998 the S&P 500 was at 1000 by 2008, S&P was at 676, creating one lost decade. What happened subsequently? Why is the S&P 500 is at a 4,500 level? Is it because of the growth? The answer is no. US is experiencing a very anemic growth. So what is that which is making this S&P climb to such a dizzy height of 4,500 now? The answer lies only in the liquidity. After the crash of 2007 market because of the housing scam, the US government started quantitative easing which is the other name for printing of money. It printed massive amounts of money and started flooding the markets. Because the interest rates were zero, this money has to find some place and it started chasing assets and it started chasing the stocks because stocks had an yield which was better than the bank rate and it is pushing up the stock prices. Will this be a permanent feature? Can, keep, can the central bank keep on printing money and keep on propping up the market? The answer is no. At some point of time, this has to end and when it ends and it can give rise to a very, very unpleasant situation and then it can result in loss of a decade or it could result in loss of many decades like the way it has happened in Japanese case. US is a developed market. The chances of growth there is very, very less. It's not like an emerging market where there is a lot of unsaturated demand is there. No, it's a saturated market. So the chances of growing there are much lesser. 
so the current bull market is raging not because of the growth it is mainly because of the liquidity and added to the liquidity is the sentiment the willingness of the retail public to participate in the bull market which is resulting in this kind of a frenzy us is going through a massive bull market at the moment for last 10 odd years and when it ends it might have the risk of going the japanese way that risk is very very real for those of you who are very fond of the us market you should remember when the US markets fall down, all the ammunition that was there with the central banks have been already spent and they may not have more ammunition to prop up the market and markets may go the Japanese way for a long period of time to come. Now you may brush aside the Japanese, the Chinese and the US story and you say we are in India. India is something which is different. What is the lessons from the history from the Indian stock market? Indian stock market had a peak of 4,200 in the year 1992. It started all the way from about 1,000 on the Sensex a year before or a year and a half before and it climbed to 4,000 level. Yes, 300% return in a span of one year. And the massive crash came in. It was not a normal market. It was a Harshad Mehta scam. It was a rigged market. Nevertheless, the after effects are similar. In 1992, the stock markets made a peak of 4,200 on the Sensex. What happened subsequently? For next 12 years, the stock market languished at the same levels or levels which are lower than that. 1992 markets crashed and brought down the market valuation to a level of 2,000. But subsequently, because of the hopes of Manmohan Singh government at that time, it climbed up to about level of 3,000. In between, there was a spike which came during the dot-com bus, which propelled the Sensex to the previous high level, but it did not stay there for long and it collapsed again. Only in the year of 2004, Sensex crossed that 4000 mark and a massive bull market started from there onwards. So even in Indian context, from 1990 to 2004, literally a dozen of years has been lost without earning anything. Imagine the plight of somebody who came into the market in the year 1992 at the fag end of the bull market and bought the stocks or index or any of the, the stock market instruments at that time had to wait 12 long years even to break even. So the risks of bull market are there across the globe. It is there in US, it is there in China, it is there in India, it is there in every part of the world. You have to be extremely careful when you participate on the bull market. It gives you a feeling of happiness. It gives you a feeling that you have conquered. It gives you a feeling that I have mastered the stock market. I know what to bet on. You don't have to be a master in the bull market. You say this will go up and it will go up. But if you do not know what happens when the bull market ends, then the, it can potentially ruin you. And it's in your best interest that you know about these points and handle the bull market with extreme level of caution. I talked about the history of the world indexes. If this is the damage which has happened at an index level, indexes do not die. They will languish there or they will reclaim after a long period of time. But the same happy moments cannot be told about the individual stocks. When a bull market comes, each bull market has its darlings. A few stocks will rise, everybody wants to buy it. Have you heard of companies like Aban Offshore or an Arcom or an Infrastructure Story, the Jet Airways, the Kingfisher Airlines, anything, each bull market has its favorites. Such stocks which participate in the bull markets may not see one another bull run in their lifetime. These kind of a stocks may be lost permanently in that particular bull market and you will never get a chance to see the previous highs in these kind of a stocks. So if you are a person who is buying index, you at least have a hope that it may regain at some point of time in future. It could be a very, very distant future. If you have purchased the individual stocks or the long funds in a mutual fund industry, there is a real risk that you will lose money permanently. I have told the risks of a bull market. Does it mean to say that you should not participate in a bull market? You should wind up everything and close and walk away? The answer is no. You must participate in the bull market, 
but with abundant caution and you should know what you should do and what you should not do if you follow the principles that i am going to discuss now you can come out as a successful investor from this bull market what is that you should do to be a successful investor in a bull market without getting yourself ruined when the bull market ends the best thing that i can tell you is work with professional and experienced financial planner i repeat the word professional and experienced financial planners when you say professional if somebody is knowledgeable that is half the work done you have the requisite knowledge but knowledge without application is only a knowledge in a library book you need an experience and experience can come only over a period of time if you can work with a professional and experienced advisors they have the knowledge part and they have the wisdom part both are fine and they will be able to guide you through this bull market how you can make most out of the bull market and how you can prevent the debilitating effects of the bull market when the market's correct but this is the best suggestion that i can think of i can give it to you if you are a do it yourself investor and you don't want to use the services of any financial planner what is that you can do number 1 try to control your emotions see bull markets or a bear markets will play with your emotions you are stuck with fear or greed when the markets fall down you are stuck with fear when markets are raging you are stuck with greed the best thing that you can do is to control your emotions and that's difficult part if you are able to control your emotions most of the things that are required for you to win in the stock market are already there what other things you can do the other thing that you can do is avoid putting large chunks of money because there is a momentum in a stock or a fund or any sector follow the discipline if you have a disciplined approach okay i'm going to put so much of a money every month into this fund or this stock or any instrument that you have picked up stick to the discipline because that is moving very fast don't commit extra amounts of money do not leverage don't borrow outside and come and invest in the stock market thinking that i am borrowing at 9% rate of interest this stock is going to give me 20% rate of return if i pay back 9% to the borrowing institution i still make 11% don't make these calculations leveraging will badly fail in a bull market what you should completely avoid is leverage do not leverage if you want to invest invest with your money if something goes wrong you don't owe money to someone else stop leveraging the best way to guide through the bull market is through the sip route systematic investment plans route every month or every week or every quarter or every year dedicate a certain amount of money and only that much amount of money you put in the stock market this will take out the effects of fear and greed from you this will also put a exposure control on the amount of money you are going to put in the stock market if you are an investor investing in the stock markets why i say prove please continue to do this good work don't look at the television screen what the markets are doing stick to your discipline and it, you should be able to do these things in a right way and the after effects of bull market may not affect you to such an extent yet another very important thing that you have to keep in mind is because stock markets are going up and it gives you a feeling that you are making a lots of money in the stock market do not put 100% of your money in the stock market when i say stock market investing in index or individual stocks or a mutual fund scheme all are stock markets only don't put 100% of your savings into the stock market practice asset allocation your fixed income is equally important as a stock market exposure let us say that you have arrived at a asset allocation of let's say 60% equity and 40% uh, into the debt when the equity moves up this asset allocation get altered because of the price rise in the equity equity may become 70 or 80 or 85 or 90% depending on what stage of the bull market this equity is in whenever it gets altered by more than 10% or so you sell off that portion of equity and convert into debt so maintain proper asset allocation and when you see significant deviation from the preset asset allocation pattern rebalance it to bring to the previous level if you feel that the stock market is too much and it is going 
too fast, too quickly, it's not a bad idea to reduce your exposure to the equity and increase your exposure towards the debt. That's not a bad idea at all. You can do it on a graded fashion. What you should not do? You should not abruptly close your position in the stock market and move everything to the debt or move the money into the bank. If you try to do that, what happens is, today the Sensex is at 58,000. Madness of markets on the upside as well as on the downside will never be known. In spite of all the caution, Sensex may still climb up to 1 lakh level. If you walk out of the market completely, then what happens is that you will not get the benefit of this bull market. So the right thing for you to do is, one, maintain discipline, maintain proper asset allocation. When your asset allocation get deviated significantly, reset the previous asset allocation or as the markets climb through, reduce your equity exposure and move more and more towards the debt fund. That's the right strategy to follow. If you follow these strategies, then I'm absolutely certain that you can come out of this bull market without getting hurt too much. Dear viewers, by this time you would have realized, while the bull markets are good times to be in, they also have a potential to ruin you if you do not follow discipline or if you do not follow the established rules. I hope the episode that I have done today helped you to understand what might happen when the bull markets end and what you need to be doing when the bull market is running. If this helped you to understand the way through the stock market, please like this video. If you are a person watching this episode for the first time or if you are yet to subscribe to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon. Don't forget to share this video with your near and dear ones. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRI Money Clinic. I shall be back with you with yet another topic in yet another video very, very soon. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.